Hello everyone and welcome to this video on recurrence relations. So in this video we want to show the running time of the following recurrence relation and I have the recurrence relation in the green rectangle and the recursive case states that t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus 2 times n and the base case states that t of 0 is equal to 0. So we're going to use a technique called iteration to solve the running time and we're going to need two columns. One I'm going to call k which will contain the number of iterations and the other one will be t of n, which will show what the function t looks like at each step. So let's go ahead and get started with our first step. So k is going to be equal to 1, and our function t of n is going to be equal to t of n minus 1 plus 2 times n. And I got that from the recursive case. Now to go to the next step, we need to figure out what t of n minus 1 is. And we can do that by substituting in for n. In our, in our recursive case, we're going to substitute in n minus 1. And so let me show you guys what I mean. So t of n minus 1 now is going to be equal to t of n minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 times n minus 1. And if we simplify this, we get t of n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. Okay, so this means that we can substitute now. We can substitute in for t of n minus 1. We can substitute in t of n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. So now, this is our second step. So k is equal to 2. And our function t of n is equal to t of n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2 plus 2 times n. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this down below. And I'm going to kind of explain exactly what we did here. So our function t of n minus 1 has now become t of n minus 2 plus 2 times n minus 2. And then we've added the 2 times n here. All right. Okay. So I want to simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be equal to t of n minus 2 plus 2 times 2 times n minus 2. Okay? All right. So now we need to figure out what t of n minus 2 is. And to do that, we're going to basically do the same thing. So we get t of n minus 2 is equal to t of n minus 2 minus 1 plus 2 times n minus 2. And if we simplify this, we get t of n minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 4. Okay? So now k is going to equal 3, and our function t of n is going to be equal to t of n minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 4. All right. And then we're going to add in 2 times 2 times n minus 2. All right. So let's go ahead and erase this here. And let's kind of show what we did again. So now t of n minus 2 became t of n minus 3 plus 2 times n minus 4, and then we needed to add 2 times 2 times n minus 2, and we did that here, 2 times 2 times n minus 2. All right. Okay, and so we're going to keep doing this until we see a pattern, um, but I don't see a pattern yet, so let me go ahead and simplify that equation that we just now wrote. So we get t of n minus 3 plus 3 times 2 times n minus 4 minus 2. And I still don't see a pattern, so let's go um, another step here. And let's solve for t of n minus 3. So t of n minus 3 is going to be equal to t of n minus 3 minus 1 plus 2 times n minus 3, and if we simplify this, we get t of n minus 4 
plus 2 times n minus 6. And so now our k will equal 4, and our function t of n will be equal to t of n minus 4 plus 2 times n minus 6 plus 3 times 2 times n minus 4 minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase that, uh, what we did below. And let's simplify this equation. So we get t of n minus 4 plus 4 times 2 times n minus 6 minus 4 minus 2. All right, so now I do see a pattern. So let's take the um, equations and rewrite them below. So we're going to take uh, that first equation here. We're going to take this equation here. Uh, we're going to take this equation here and this last one here. All right, so when k is equal to 1, we get t of n minus 1 plus 2 times n. And I'm doing this so you guys can see the pattern. I do see a pattern now. Uh, when k is equal to 2, we get t of n minus 2 plus 2 times 2 times n minus 2. Okay, and when k is equal to 3, we get t of n minus 3 plus 3 times 2 times n minus 4 minus 2. And when k is equal to 4, we get t of n minus 4 plus 4 times 2 times n minus 6 minus 4 minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase everything that we did before. And hopefully now uh, you guys can see a pattern as well. If not, I will try my best to explain. Okay. All right, so here we have our k iterations and we have our function t of n. All right. So when k is equal to 1, we get t of n minus 1. When k is equal to 2, we get t of n minus 2. When k is equal to 3, we get t of n minus 3. And when k is equal to 4, we get t of n minus 4. So we're trying to find a general form um, for our problem here. So that general form is, uh, is basically what we, is the equation that we see once we see this pattern. So for some arbitrary k value, so let's say that, that we had we were at iteration k, then our function t would look like this. It would be t of, sorry here, t of n minus k, right? And then if I rewrite that first um, that first equation, so I could rewrite it to look like this, it's still equivalent. So I have one times two times n then we can see that this becomes k times 2 times n, okay? Now for that last one, uh, that last step here is, it, I can see that it's a summation actually. So we can rewrite this equation as well. So we re rewrite these equations, we basically get, uh, well, let me see here, I'm gonna use the eraser. So for that second one, you could think of it as, uh, as a minus 2 times 1. For the next one here, you can think of it as minus 2 times uh, minus 2 times 2 plus 1. And then that last one, if we rewrite it, we get minus 2 times 3 plus 2 plus 1. And then here, it will be, of course, uh, minus 2 times uh, 2 minus 2 times k minus 1 plus uh, k minus 2 plus keep going down until we get to 1. Okay. So uh, that's just a summation. So the general form and here I'll type or I'll write general form is t 
of n minus k plus k times 2 times n minus, well, this right here is just a summation. And so we're going to write a summation here as well. So minus 2 times the summation from i equals 1, because that's where it stops, right? All the way up to k minus 1. So we can see that it stops at 1, and we go up to k minus 1. Okay? And this is going to be of i. All right? So let me go ahead and erase all of this that we've done now. Hopefully, I've explained it decently for you guys to uh, understand. So now we have our general form, and we need to know when uh, we need to know when this when this recursive case here is going to stop. So we need to get this whole form here, this whole general form, in terms of n. And to do that, we can just look at our base case. So our base case says that it's going to stop when n is equal to 0 because t of 0 is equal to 0. So that means that we want t of n minus k to be equal to 0. And in order to do that, we need n minus k to equal to 0. And that means that n is equal to k. So we can substitute um, k for n and vice versa. So we want to get this in terms of n. So we're going to uh, we're going to substitute out k for the value n. All right. So now if we rewrite our equation, we get t of n minus n plus n times 2 times n minus 2 times the summation from n minus 1, I'm sorry, from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of i. Okay, and if we rewrite this again, we get t of 0 plus 2 times n squared minus 2 times the summation from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of i. Okay, and now we're going to rewrite this again. So this is equal to 0 plus 2n squared minus 2 times well, let's actually solve for that summation. So I'm going to put a little note here. So the summation from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of i is equal to, uh, let's see here, is equal to n minus 1 times n divided by 2. Okay? How do I know this? Well, I remember... Um, a few summation formulas and one formula is this so the formula that I'm actually remembering here is that the summation from i equals 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2 so I'm just substituting in n minus 1 into that formula Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Um, get rid of all this here. And we're going to put in that, uh, that equation now for our summation. So that is n minus 1 times n divided by 2. Okay. So now, if we rewrite our equation one last time, we get 2 times n squared minus, um, let's see here, minus n minus 1 times n. And that's because the 2, the 2s will cancel out. All right. And I thought that that would be the last time, but it looked like we have to uh, continue here. So this is equal to 2 times n squared. Uh, let's see, minus n squared minus n. And this is equal to 2 times n squared 
minus n squared plus n. And we're going to come down below here. And we get n squared plus n. All right, so this is our guess of what this recurrence relation is equal to. And this tells us that this is big O of n squared. Okay, so I know that was a lot of math, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment section. I'll try my best to get to you and answer the question. Uh, please leave likes if you found this video helpful. And please share it as well. That'll help me. And um, it'll help others as well. So definitely click that like button and that subscribe button to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will put links to videos that are similar in the description below so you guys can check those out. And as always, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.